I'm back here again with the common mode joke setup that we had before. This time I did actually go ahead and solder those wires together so it's just easier to work on. So I set up the thing on the common mode testing. So everything is set up as we had before. And what we want to do this time is to see how this FT2431 uh, uh, mix core holds up when we heat up the, the metal, the core and the wires. So right now we are at room temperature. Um, I probably should change that to Celsius. The reason for that is we're gonna run the whole thing in Celsius because I know the wire should be safe to 2 to 250 degrees Celsius. So right now we are at room temperature, 19 degrees. And I'm gonna use right here our little heater and heat it up to, let's dial it down to 100 degrees Celsius first. And start with that. So right now it's still nicely flat at 30, negative 30 decibel. So the temperature is now up to 44 degrees. And looking at that, probably the first thing to melt is my twist, uh, the Ziploc ties there. Not that I think of. Trying to do this a little bit spread out so it evenly heats up. Let me power up the air a little bit more. Oh, I guess that's the highest we have. Let's go ahead and change it to 150. Temperature is dropping a little bit, but not too fast. So that means you kind of get this thing nicely evenly warmed up.
So what we're simulating here is the core getting heated up by the current flowing through. Obviously using current would have been a much better test, but I don't think I have that set up. We look over here, still at 70 degrees Celsius, don't see a difference in our curve. That's nice to see. Go ahead and double check that so the temperature isn't falling too quickly. That's good. Let's go ahead and notch it up to 300 degrees over there just to get the temperature a little bit up. Let's see here. Yeah, not at home on touch. Was it cooled down to 66 degrees now? Uh, let's see if we can heat this up a little bit higher. Definitely have an easier way to get to 70 degrees and 80 degrees here. Let's just play 100 degrees Celsius.
it looks like I got stuck here at 220 degrees Celsius. Doesn't seem to want to go up much. wanted to get a little bit higher so let's go ahead and change the settings to 400 here no. why that didn't want to work for before so we drop down to 100 degrees so it does mean that the core is slowly holding and getting hotter too and holding it too Putting the whole thing into a preheated oven probably would be much more accurate. There's some flux there on that fork is starting to melt. Yeah, we have it now at 150. That's about where I wanted the heat to stay at. So I'm now just gonna try to keep it available at 150 or thereabouts.
So that core does radiate some heat now. And definitely a slowdown at 100 degrees Celsius. So the core itself, I would say, did heat up to 100 degrees Celsius. If you do a comparison, I think the curve went a little slightly up compared to the prior. It was flatter in this area down here. But even that is not that horribly bad. So if you look at the marker, the marker right here is at 2700 and if you go down lower Right here is for 14 megahertz for the 20 meter band. So, definitely in the lower bands of HF, the core is still staying quite stable low on the heat uh, with the heat. So let's cool it down a little bit and come back later. So now we let the setup cool down to room temperature again and we see the curve is again nice and flat. So if we compare those two curves side by side, you can see it the heat did have a slight impact, but it wasn't that bad at all. So I'm pretty happy about that. If you look now back at the core itself, I don't see any issues at all that the heat did. So the PTFE insulation on the wire is really great for the heat and held up quite well. And I'm actually surprised that these black zip ties held up too. I wasn't sure if they were rated for any heat or not.